Hi, this is Katie from Katie's Classic Books, and today I'm here with my March wrap-up. Um, the first book I read in March was my poetry collection for the month, and that is Wishing for Birds by Elizabeth Hewer. This collection was published in 2015, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Um, the collection is split into three sections, entitled Looking Out, Looking In, and Looking Back. And in these poems, Elizabeth explores herself through exploring what's inside of herself, the world around her, and her past. Um, the theme of desire for something more runs very strongly through these poems in her exploration of herself in the universe. And I thought that was a very beautiful, poignant theme. Um, I absolutely loved this collection. This was the best poetry collection I've read in a very long time. My favorite so far this year, and probably even better than any collection I read last year as well. Um, this was accessible and relatable while still being very beautiful. I had started to think that contemporary poetry that is accessible and relatable has no literary merit because of a few collections I read um, that kind of made me feel that way. But I was wrong because this collection was accessible, it was relatable, and yet it was so profound and beautiful and had lovely writing. And uh, I would highly recommend this. This was an absolute joy to read. The second book I finished this month was uh, Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. This was published in 1862, and I gave this 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Um, this is a classic novel of epic proportions, and it's the reason why I read so little the last couple months, because this is such a beast of a book, but one that I'm very glad I have read. Um, this novel is set during a very tumultuous period in France's history. Um, there are two revolutions and an uprising that go on throughout the span of the novel. Um, this is a novel that is about specific characters in France at this time, and yet France as a whole and its history and its politics. Um, our main character that we follow is a man named Jean Valjean, who is an ex-convict. And we follow him from the prison hulks and then afterwards um, as he becomes a virtuous and very compassionate man. Um, all the other characters in this book do revolve around him, I feel. Um, they're all people he meets at one point or another. And you really grow to care for them as the novel progresses. And I'm very glad to have read it as I feel like it was very important. And... The characters, like I said, they've stayed with me and I cared about them and there were some very touching moments, particularly at the end. I won't spoil anything, but um, I was really surprised at myself, but there's a moment between Marius and his grandfather that was just so touching, it made me cry. And even later on, there's a moment with Jean Valjean that almost made me cry as well. So. After spending so much time with these characters, it became quite touching at the end. Um, besides the characters, um, I think this book was, it was very interesting because I commend Victor Hugo for painting an entire nation and its people in, in one book. I think what he strove to do is quite noble. I did struggle, however, though, with some of the tangents he went on. He went on a lot of tangents about history and some philosophical musings on religion and war and stuff like that. Um, and I found it all interesting. Some sections um, that were tangents of that kind I liked more than others. But a lot of the time, um, those tangents were quite dry and it made the novel a little harder to get through and it made me have to take more time with it. So that was my one complaint, although I don't even think it was entirely a bad thing, but that is the reason why I didn't give this 5 out of 5 stars and um, it knocked it down a star for me. Other than that, um, this just was a lovely classic that I'm so glad I read and it's just 
important um, and I think it has an enduring quality to it. Uh, Victor Hugo even said himself, and it's uh, here on the front, so I'll read this quote. He says, as long as there are ignorance and poverty on earth, books of this kind may serve some purpose. So there you have it. That was Les Miserables. The third book and the final book that I finished in March was The Ghost and Mrs. Muir by R.A. Dick, um, which is really a pseudonym for Josephine Amy Campbell Leslie. This book was published in 1945, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. The novel follows a recently widowed woman named Lucy Muir, and she decides to move to a cottage by the sea with her two children to escape the stifling grasp of her in-laws. Lucy is one of those women that is quite a people pleaser on the outside and so everybody seeks to dominate and control her and make her do things she doesn't want to do. But on the inside she's quite a strong woman and she she just wants some peace and to be able to do what she would like. And so moving to this cottage by the sea sort of affords her that opportunity. And while she's living there, she realizes that the cottage is haunted by the ghost of an old sea captain named Captain Greg. And she forms a special friendship with Captain Greg, and he helps her through all the um, things that happen to her throughout the years that she lives in this cottage. And eventually this friendship turns into a kind of love, and it's rather a unique love story. Um, I absolutely loved this book, and I've loved this story for a long time. This, uh, There was actually a classic film that was made that was based on this book. What is so cool is that uh, Vintage has published this series of books called Vintage Movie Classics, where they've republished books that classic films were based on, but the books have gone out of print, and I think that's uh, a really cool endeavor. This is the second one I've read that have been published in that series, actually. And so, of course, I've loved this story for quite a long time, and the book was different, but wonderful in its own right. And it's just a very unique love story, and a unique ghost story as well, because it isn't a scary ghost story. It's just very interesting and very quiet, um, and just, it's lovely really, and I really enjoyed it. So those are the books that I read in March. Um, I write full reviews on all of the books I read, so you can read those on Tumblr or on Goodreads if you're interested. I'll link those two sites in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!